we're going to get into the message. And you hear me say stuff like this a lot, but today's message, Larry, could be life-changing. Could be life-changing. You know why I say that so much, Rhonda? Because the Word of God is life-changing. And today is, is, a, is a message that I have sort of been thinking about for a little while. Actually, ever since, she's not here right now, which is good because she would try to take the credit for this. But Megan Loveless, she kind of wanted, she said something to me about um, how-to. You know, like, we need to have more how-to kind of stuff. And so I did like this little short um, series on how to, how to pray, you know, how to pray for your church, if you guys remember that. Um, we still actually have some little prayer things out in the foyer if you want one of those from that. Um, but today's message is, is one that took me a little bit to think about. And then I came across some really good little passages of scripture to go along with this. And so I'm going to say something really bold today. Like sometimes I'll say, man, this message was for this person. Or, you know, somebody will say, this message was for me. And I'm going to go out on a limb today and say, Dean, this message is for you, my friend. And Lori, this message is for you. Chloe, Jamie, this message is for you. Okay? This message is for every single one of you. So I would like for you to forget there's anybody else in the room. This message is for you. It's definitely for, for you. It, it might be for you right now. It might be for something in the future. But I promise you this is for you. So please, imagine you're the only person in the room. I've said this a lot of times, but I, I think about it almost every Sunday. Just think, if God were to come to you, Shron, and say, listen, tomorrow, Sunday morning, I have a message for you. Okay, I'm going to be talking to you. You listen, okay? Pay attention. Imagine how excited Sharon is going to be here. And how, how much she's going to pay attention and listen and go, man, God said he was going to speak to me. Okay? I want you to have that attitude today. God is going to speak to you. It's the word of God. The word of God is life-changing. So we're going to get into it. A few weeks ago, I had the honor of driving some children to girls camp I was joking about the honor part I had to I'm just kidding I drove some girls to girls camp okay and if you've never been to Camp Cedar Ridge most of you have not it's about seven hours to get there from here you know we'll stop for lunch and stuff like that it's about seven hours so there was quite a few girls that were driving up there who had never been to Cedar Ridge and so guess what happened about one hour into the trip. What? No? You know, the potty thing wasn't so bad. Most of you are saying it. How much longer? How much longer? When are we going to get there? I'm like, it's seven hours, kid. We're not even halfway. Not even close to halfway. Right? Seven hours. So all these little girls, they're being impatient, and they're going... Man, how much longer? How much longer? How much longer? And then I had my son with me as backup, right? And so he started playing this game, and we, we would be like driving up the mountain or something, and he'd look out the window, and he goes, oh, guys, guys, you see that over there? You see that building? Do you see that? Do you see that? And the girls would be looking, and they'd be like, yeah, yeah, we see it. And he'd be like, that's not it. <laughs> he, did it he did it like probably four or five different times, and he got him every time. I was so proud of him. That's not it. By the time we got there, they were ready to, like, strangle him. So proud. The point is, all of us hate waiting. I hate waiting. You hate waiting, too. Raise your hand if you love waiting. Liar! I'm just kidding. Nobody, nobody, nobody raised their hand. Because we hate waiting. But here's the thing. We forget very often that one of the most important aspects of your relationship with God is, guess what? Waiting for Him. Waiting. But we hate waiting. We know we're supposed to love Him. We're supposed to trust Him. We're supposed to serve Him. We're supposed to obey Him. We're supposed to have faith in Him. But then there's this one 
really, really tough one. Wait for him. That's not easy. Psalms 37, 7 says, be still. Tell my son that. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. It's a tall order. Psalms 27, 13 through 14 says, I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord, he says again with an exclamation mark. Psalms 37, 34, wait for the Lord and keep his way. And he will exalt you to inherit the land. You will look, you, the land you will look on when the wicked are cut off. Go way back to Lamentations 3.25. The Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the souls who seek him. If you really think about it, waiting is probably the very best evidence that you do love him and that you do trust him and that you do have faith in him. We think the best evidence is, is obeying and, and serving and all that stuff. I, I beg to differ. I think if you really trust him and you really love him and you really have faith in him, then you're going to be willing to wait because waiting is hard. Think about it. How willing are you to wait for somebody that you don't really trust? How long are you going to wait? Chris says not very long because she's impatient. Just kidding. <laughs> so you think about like these couples, right? These young couples. And, and they're going to be away from each other for a really long time. Maybe they're going to go to different colleges. Or one of them joins the military. And they're going to be deployed for a long time think about that think about how much they have to really love each other really trust each other really have faith in each other to be willing to wait for them to come back if they don't really really trust each other and really really love each other they're probably not going to be that willing to wait it's probably not going to last very long is it if there's if there's not that trust and there's not that love and there's not that faith in each other one of them is going to move on pretty quick we say that we love god and we trust god we have faith in god so why is it that so many of us can just walk away from him when he tells us I want you to wait. You don't like waiting. The big problem that we have is many of us, I've been one of them, are not willing to persevere through the frustration. I want to feel better now. I want my kids to be better now. Rotten kids, I want them better now. I want my job to be better now. I want my car fixed now. I want vision now. I want God's direction now. Right now. We're not willing to persevere through the frustration. And so we become like those little girls on their way to girls' camp. How much longer? How much longer, God? This very same thing happened to a man after God's own heart. You know what I'm talking about? David. David, 
He's described as a man after God's own heart. And this very thing happened to him. And David starts to sound just like a lot of us do sometimes. How long? This is a really cool set of scriptures, I think. And you'll see why. Maybe you never caught it before, like me. But we're going to look at it today. Remember, I'm talking to you. Psalms 13. David starts out by saying this. How long, Lord? You can almost hear the frustration. How long, Lord? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I wrestle with my own thoughts? And day after day have sorrow in my heart. How long will my enemy triumph over me? You hear the frustration. Waiting comes with frustration. And this is kind of a bold thing to say. But I actually think that this is almost like a stage in waiting for God. Persevering through the frustration. How to wait for God. Number one, persevere through the frustration. I think a lot of us have come to think somehow that it's a good idea for us to hide our frustration from God. (laughs) You understand how silly that sounds? But we do it. He already knows. And I actually think that many, for many of us, this weight would become much more bearable if we would just tell God how we feel. He already knows. If there's anything that we can learn from this man after God's own heart, it's that we are allowed to tell God how we feel. I have learned, I hope you guys will learn this today too, maybe before you leave today, some of you need to just tell God how you're feeling. I have learned that there is a level of intimacy with God that does not come until you are willing to pour out your heart to Him. I've told this story before. And I'm telling you, man, this was a life-changing event. You're going to think I'm crazy. I'm not. I'm a little crazy, Paul, but not that crazy. Not as crazy as you think I am. <laughs> Listen, there was a time that my dad had died. I watched him die. You know, I, I carried my dad up and down the stairs like a baby. My dad drove him to the doctor, all this stuff. I prayed for my dad every single day. Prayed for him. My dad was awesome. My dad loved Jesus. And he he died at ALS, of all things. So mad. So frustrated with God. I'm like, are you kidding me? I prayed. I prayed. I meant it. I believed. Everything you said. Everything you said. It was after this time, and then there was all these other things that were frustrating me and, and making me mad and, and upset and all this stuff. And one day, it was before I even moved here, I parked my car behind the parsonage over here, and I just let God have it. You know, I was like, come on, man. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Basically, I'm going, how much longer? How much longer do I have to put up with this? I'm serving you, man. Come on, are you kidding me? How much longer? And I was so mad, and I was so frustrated. But I'm telling you, I poured my heart out to God as loud as I could. People 
who might have been over at the museum probably thought there was a lunatic over here. There was. I lost my mind for a few minutes, right? And I poured my heart out to God out of frustration. Out of frustration and pain and struggling with the thoughts in my mind and the sorrow in my heart. Do you hear what I'm saying? Now comes the crazy part. Other people saw this, so I'm not crazy, but it was the same night at the exact same moment. What the heck? Tim, you know what a bow night is? Everybody look it up when you leave. It's like a meteor, but it's huge. So I'm sitting in my dad's car, yelling at God, and all of a sudden, as soon as I shut up, all of a sudden, the sky just lit up. And I'm going, what the heck is going on? Right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right? The, the sky just lit up. I, I'm serious. And this meteor, this bonite, came flying over the church. Other people saw it. It was on Facebook. I'm not that crazy. But it, it was the timing, man. And it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen, man. It was flames and things flying off of it. And I felt, Chris, God slam his hand on the table and say, how about you start adoring me again? said, okay, that one was close enough. How about you start to adore me again? You know what it did? It made me worship better. It made me pray better. It made me seek God better. And you know why it happened? I got to a point of frustration and pain, and thoughts in my head, and sorrow in my heart, that it caused me to cry out to God. And I'm telling you guys, it opened a level of intimacy with God that there never was before. I don't want it to happen again. But it might. Do you hear me? Some of you guys are right there. I'm telling you, pour out your heart to God. Maybe this frustration and this time of waiting for God is Him trying to draw out this new level of intimacy with you. That's a loving God. Sometimes I think it's almost silly how we pray. Because we can be so frustrated, maybe even mad at God. But when we go to Him to pray, Larry, we're like, on our best behavior. You know, like we don't want Him to know we're frustrated with Him. Give me a break. Like He's not going to know, right? It's okay. I don't think, Lori, that you have to bite your tongue when it comes to talking to God. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what you're feeling. Sometimes he just wants you to pour out all that stuff. David knew what it was like to be frustrated with God, but he also knew what it meant to persevere through the frustration. And I think part of it was verbalizing it to God. Pouring out his heart to God. I've told you guys this before, and it's just funny. Like, I've had people come to me because they're frustrated or there's things going on in their life, and they want to talk to me because they want help, right? So they'll, like, sit down with me, and they'll just start spilling their guts, and they'll start telling me how they feel and all this stuff, and I'm sitting there nodding my head and listening, and then they're basically like, thank you. Thank you so much. I feel so much better. And I'm like, wait. (laughs) <laughs> tell the board I did a good job, right? No, it's just something about it. There's something about spilling your guts and pouring out your heart that is healing. Even better, pour it out to God. It's amazing. 
Maybe you've been waiting on God and you're getting frustrated. And just like David, you want to say, how much longer, God? I think it's okay that you do that. And I actually think it might be really good for you. But the most important thing is whatever you do, don't stay there. Right? Persevere through it. We have Sometimes we get to that frustrated point. We'll cry out to God, but we stay there. Tell God how mad we are, how frustrated we are, and we stay there. Whatever you do, don't do that. David knew how to persevere through the frustration. Look at how his attitude changes. We just read a couple verses. We're going to read a couple more. Look at how his attitude changes after his little outburst. Okay? After pouring his heart out to God. He's still waiting. But look at the difference in his attitude. Starting in verse 3. He says, Look on me and answer me, Lord my God. Still my Lord, still my God. Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I will sleep in death. And my enemy will say I have overcome him and my foes will rejoice when I fall. Notice, He's not complaining anymore. He's searching for answers. Look on me and answer, Lord my God. Give light to my eyes. Do you see the, the big difference? And the great thing is, even though he's frustrated with God and he's still looking for answers, he's looking in the right spot still. He's looking to God for the answers Still, sometimes, let's admit it, we get frustrated with God, so we start looking somewhere else. Right? Tired of waiting. Tired of waiting. I want to feel better now. Shut your phone off, Daryl. <laughs> we all knew it was you. You started running. Just kidding. <laughs> Look at what David's doing. He's searching for answers, but he's still searching in the right place. David knew how to wait. He says, give light to my eyes. Give light to my eyes. He's saying, guide me, God. Direct me. Show me your way. See what David does when he gets frustrated with God? Pours his heart out. He tells him how he feels. And then what does he do? Turns it into prayer. Waiting on God doesn't mean that you sit around and you do nothing. As a matter of fact, I think that it's during these times of waiting and frustration that probably have the biggest and strongest effect on your relationship with God, I think. And your maturity, for sure. And your spiritual development. I'll show you. Talking about persevering? This is what it says in James 1, 2-4. through 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. That sounds stupid. <laughs> Let's be honest. That sounds stupid. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Why? Because you know that the testing of your faith produces what? Perseverance. And then this is what, this is what gets me. That maybe I haven't understood the right way before. Let perseverance finish its work. You get that? Let perseverance finish its work. Perseverance has a job. Sometimes we don't let it finish its job. You hear? 
That's what it says. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be made mature and complete, not lacking anything. Sounds good. Do you know how to become mature and complete, not lacking anything? Persevere and let perseverance finish its job. Don't give up. These are the times when your faith is really tested. And this is when you grow in maturity and your faith is strengthened. If only we could be more like David, let our frustration drive us to prayer more. How awesome would that be? David knew that if God didn't direct him and lead him, that the enemy was going to win. He says it himself. Give light to my eyes or or my enemy will win. Pretty much. So he keeps praying. So many of us give up way too early because we don't want to wait. I I remember this story. I did a message on this, I don't know, a long time ago, about Cornelius. Do you guys know Cornelius? So he's this centurion, right? And the Bible talks about Cornelius. I wish I, I, wish I had the reference. You can look it up. Oh, name's Cornelius. <laughs> so Cornelius, it, it describes him as like a devout man. And it says that he loved God. And his family loved God. And they gave to the poor and all this stuff. They were good, good people. But Cornelius wasn't saved. What? He didn't know Jesus yet. He loved God. But this is what it said. Something along these lines. He prayed constantly. Or he was devoted to prayer. And then I love the way it says this. Then one day he had a vision. One day he had a vision. And it was to go get Peter, right? And then, interesting thing, the next day it says that Peter went up onto the roof to do what? Pray. And guess what happens? Peter has a vision. What's the common denominator? Dedication to prayer. Prayer. Go into the rest of the story, but it would take too long. Prayer. Cornelius' whole family gets saved because he's dedicated to prayer. Some of you have been praying for vision. Some of you have been praying for guidance or something else. But because God didn't answer your prayer right away, some of you have given up. And I think sometimes we forfeit our miracles because we give up too early. I think maybe your breakthrough, Kathleen, is tomorrow. Maybe it's today. But maybe it's a few months from now, Heather. Maybe. But it might never happen if you give up. Keep praying, keep believing, keep waiting. Bummer. Mark Batterson, I think he said this in one of his books, he said, when you pray on a regular basis, irregular things happen regularly. Good stuff. Keep praying. Pray in your frustration. When you're mad at God, pray anyway. Something amazing happens when you do that. It's one of the greatest promises, I think, that God makes to us. And you're going to see it happen to David in a minute. David is in a low place. Low, low place. But you're going to see something amazing happen to him in a couple minutes. And Paul talks about it in Philippians 4, 
6 through 7. And you all know this. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And what will happen? Anybody know? And the peace of God, which transcends understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. The peace of God, which transcends understanding. That's good stuff. When we allow our frustration to turn back into prayer, God promises us peace beyond beyond human comprehension. That means you don't even have to understand it. You're not gonna, because you're human. That's the point, right? Peace that passes human understanding. Trials, I've said this a lot of times, I've said this so many times, I don't remember if this is original to me. It might not be. I'm not claiming it is. Trials, tribulations, all that stuff, they can make you bitter. They can make you battered. Or they can make you better. You hear? Keep praying. David is praying that God would help him understand the things that are happening where to go, it says give light to my eyes, I don't know what to do, I don't understand, and guess what happens? The last little transition that David goes through, peace that passes understanding. David is praying for understanding, right? He gets something better, something that he's not going to understand, how ironic. Peace that Passes understanding. That's pretty good. This is what he says next. The last transition, I think. The last step in waiting for God. Listen to, listen to how it changes. But I will trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices. In your salvation. I will sing the Lord's praise. For he has been good to me. Does that sound like the same person as like four verses earlier? Does it sound like the same person? When we read these six verses from Psalms 13 too quickly, I think we kind of miss this incredible transition that David goes through. He was just a guy crying out to God, how long? How long? How long must I wrestle with my thoughts and day after day have my heart full of sorrow? A guy, listen, this is David, a guy with bad thoughts in his head. Serious. He's got bad stuff going on in his head. And a heart full of sorrow. People go, that's me. That's me. Right? He goes from this guy with bad thoughts in his head, a heart full of sorrow, to trust, rejoicing, and praise in six verses. It's amazing. Peace that passes understanding. As David begins to pray, he's a- able to enter into this other stage of waiting for the Lord. And we like the sound of this stage. Peace that passes understanding. You might 
be almost there, guys. You might be almost there, but you won't even pour out your heart to God like he doesn't know already. Get some alone time with God. Tell him how mad you are. Tell him how frustrated you are. Tell him. He knows. David wasn't even praying for peace. I think that's cool. He was saying, God, give me peace. Praying for understanding. And he got something we don't understand. Funny. <laughs> we see God keeping his promise that Paul talks about. And I think that David draws some of that strength from a very, very important place. Pay attention to this. Some of us have forgotten about this place. Remember when David said, I will sing the Lord's praise for he will be good to me. Remember that? He didn't say that. That's how we interpret it in our head. He didn't say that. You know what he says? He has been good to me. See the difference? He's not praising God. He's not worshiping God. He's not trusting God because of what he's going to do. He says, I know you have been good to me. That's a place we forget to go. Unless it's something we want to be mad at him about. If we could look back at all the good things that God has done for us. You know, People who say, I'm waiting for a miracle. I've never seen a miracle. You know what I would say? You've never not seen a miracle. You've never not seen a miracle, bro. You woke up this morning. You, you understand how the human body works? Give me a break. You've never not seen a miracle. I'll sing the Lord's praise. For he has been good to me. And he also says that his love is unfailing. So if God's love is unfailing and he has been good to me, then I can trust and believe he's going to be good to me. You see? I'm going to ask the prayer team to come up. This is a big day for some of you. Some of you are thinking, I'll do this when I get home. Not likely. I hate to say it that way. It's not likely. I'm going to have the prayer team come up. This is a very important day for some of you. Because you are so frustrated with God... And you're so tired of waiting for God that you are about to walk away. I'm not wrong. Maybe you're not about to walk away, but you're just so frustrated, man. This could be God driving you to pour your heart out to Him. To unlock another level of intimacy with God that you have never had before, ever. It's amazing. Amazing. You want prayer about that? If you want to just come to the altar and you don't want anybody to pray with you, you want to, it's okay, listen, it's okay for you to say, leave me alone. I want to talk to God for a minute. It's okay. Do whatever you need to do. You can kneel at your seat. You can sit at your seat. Whatever you need to do. But some of you need to get some things straight. You're not hiding anything from God, Lori. He already knows. But maybe he's just waiting for you to admit it. Bring it up to him. Tell him. Pour out your heart. Tell him how you're feeling. Maybe cry a little bit. It's okay. Sometimes that's what it takes. I'm telling you, don't wait too long. Don't stay there. Some of you got to 
Tell God how you're feeling. Some of you need to start praying again. Some of you need to just start praying. I, I don't know how you can be a Christian and not pray other than Sunday morning. I can't imagine how hard that is. I mean, you need to just start praying regularly. When you're frustrated, when you don't feel like it, right, Kathleen? Where's Kathleen? We talked about this. When you don't feel like praying, you better start praying. I'm serious. Corporate prayer this week was me and Kathleen. And she said the same thing I did. I didn't feel like coming tonight. When you persevere, say, I better go. I better go. When you don't feel like worshiping, a real good time to make a decision to worship anyway. So important. We don't want to do it when we're frustrated. Come on. We want to do it when God is blessing us and moving. Then we want to worship, right? To do something for me and I'll do something for you, God. It's not how it works. Pray when you don't feel like praying. Worship when you don't feel like worshiping. Pour out your heart to God when you're mad at Him and you don't want Him to know your business. <laughs> he already knows. It's important. One of the greatest verses in the Bible, Isaiah 40, 31. says, but they who wait for the Lord. Not even those who obey the Lord. Not those who serve the Lord or do stuff. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When you wait for God. Again, I think probably the greatest evidence that you really love and trust someone is your willingness to wait for them however long it takes. Right? What if Rick gave you a limit? You're, you're going away for something that if you're, if you're back in a month, I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> I think I just got him in trouble. And he didn't even say it. It doesn't work that way, does it? Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Guys, this message is for you. No doubt about it. If it's not for you today, it's going to be soon, I, I'm telling you. Or you've already been there. Just don't stay. Don't stay. If you need prayer for anything, Tim and Carrie, do you want to go stand in the back? Tim and Carrie in the back. They're, they're here to pray with you. Maybe you just say, you know, I don't, I don't have a relationship with Jesus. I, I'm not really waiting for anybody. And you want to start a relationship with Jesus. No better time than now. Say it again. If you're deciding to wait till you get home, it's not likely that it's going to happen. Steve Klein said one time, sometimes I forget before I'm done with my nachos at lunch. And it's, it's the truth. If God is stirring you now, do it now. If God is stirring you now, do it now. I'm going to give you a few minutes. Start talking to Him. If you're not coming up for prayer, I'm going to encourage you. Close your eyes. Just start talking to Him. See what starts to come up. See what starts to come up. Sounds crazy. You might start saying things that you don't even understand. Just close your eyes. You're the only one in here. You and God. Start having a conversation.
Maybe you need to tell him some really important words, really simple words. I'll wait. I'll wait. Maybe you need to tell him, God, I'm frustrated. I don't want to wait, but I'll do it. Tell him. And start to pray again, man. Make it a regular part of your life. Pray. Pray. And the peace of God, which transcends understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. That's awesome. All of us know sometimes when we have to wait too long, we just stop. Don't do that. Your miracle your miracle could be just around the corner. Sometimes that miracle is as big as God just touching your heart, making it new. That's huge. You and God. We're going to wait a little bit longer. Sometimes waiting means being quiet and listening. the king of my heart be the mountain where I run the fountain I think of oh, my soul let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the rest of my life oh it's my song you are Just stand up together. I'm going to pray. And then you can leave if you want to. Paul's going to go into the bridge of that song. It just says, you're never going to let me down. Never going to let me down. I encourage you to stay for a couple minutes and just tell God that. Even if you don't feel like it, so much more important if you don't really feel like it that you do that. 
And then the altars are going to be open for as long as you need them. If you want to be by yourself again, just let us know. Fine. Pray. Lord God, we just come to you now. In the name of Jesus. God, we know that there are people in here who are in dark places. Who are fighting against the thoughts in their head whose hearts are full of sorrow, who have been waiting, some patiently waiting, some serving you through it, and still waiting. And the frustration is building. And the sorrow is building. And the bad thoughts are building. And they feel like giving up. But I pray that you would give people in here, including me, the strength to persevere. God, that we can persevere through this frustrating time. But God, I pray that this would be a time where you teach us to communicate with you better by pouring our hearts out to you, laying it all out, the stuff that you already know. God, that we would just empty our hearts, Lord. Make room for your peace. I pray that this frustration, this sorrow, will cause people to cry out to you, to pour out their hearts to you. That we know you're going to hear them. And God, as they do that, I, I pray that it would drive them to prayer even when they don't feel like it. God, a devotion to prayer. Knowing that one day, like Cornelius, one day, you're going to show up in a mighty way. If we would just wait for you. God, let our love and our trust and our faith for you grow. strengthen us. God, I pray that people would allow perseverance to finish its job so that it wouldn't be wasted. All this frustration and sorrow and this battle in our minds would not be wasted as we let perseverance finish its job. God, I pray that it is as we begin to pray, we pray regularly. God, even if we don't see results right away, God, that we're going to wait. We're going to keep praying. And that that peace that passes understanding would flood into the hearts and the minds of those who are crying out to you. Peace that passes understanding that we're not even going to get it. We're not even going to understand it. That it'll boggle our minds. That your peace is filling us up in times when we shouldn't feel it. Times where we should be anxious and worried. Times that we should just be still be frustrated, Lord, that there will be peace there. Peace that passes understanding, Lord. I pray that you would touch people today. As always, we, we just pray that nobody would leave here the same as when they came. Continue to stir in people. They would cry out to you, open their hearts to you, pour out their hearts to you. In the name of Jesus we pray.
Oh, you are good.